Hi, it's Money44 here and today I would like to invite you to a short review of the BL480 brushless motor from the T238. The motor for the review was provided by T238. The motor comes to us in a small black cardboard box with the T238 logo on the front, and inside you will find BL480 brushless motor of course, a 1.3mm Allen wrench, and set of spur connectors and heat shrink insulation. The motor itself is CNC machined from aluminium, is painted grey with some gold accents. The pinion gear is mounted on the D-type mount. In addition to the markings on the side of the motor, engraving can also be found on the bottom of the motor, in form of the serial number and the motor polarity marking. On the bottom you will also find a the speed control, but about that in a moment. The motor parameters themselves on the manufacturer's website tell us that the motor operates between 7.4 and 16.8 volts. Without load, its speed is 33,000 rpm and the power consumption should be 1.8 amperes. Under load it should reach 25,800 rpm and the power consumption should be around 20 amps. For more data refer to the page, link in the description of the video. The motor does not differ much in appearance from a standard motor, so what is special about it? To explain it we need to understand how it differs from a standard motor, and I will try to explain it as simply as I can, but I'm not an expert, so forgive me if I'm wrong. In a standard motor we have a permanent magnet mounted on the housing or stator, rotor with winding, commutator and brushes. The current is passed through brushes, usually made of graphite, to the commutator, a copper element that rotates with the rotor. Then the current flows to the winding around which an electromagnetic field is generated. This interacts with the magnetic field of the permanent magnets mounted in the stator, and the rotor begins to rotate. Each section of the commutator is a different coil on the rotor, so that the magnets do not align, but all the time attract and repel each other. But what does this mean for us? Well, only that in the case of the ordinary brush motor we have two elements that constantly rub against each other and wear out, namely the commutator and brushes. So two problems arise, namely that we have additional resistance on the motor created by friction of these elements and their wear, which after prolonged operation may mean that need for replacement. So let's see how a brushless motor works. Here permanent magnets are mounted on the rotor and coils surrounding this on the stator. Current is applied directly to the coils and everything is controlled by electronic circuit. The advantage of such a solution is obvious, there is no set of brushes and commutator that will wear out and cause additional loads, and thus the motor uses less energy to do the same and sometimes more work. The downside on the other hand is precisely the need for controlled electronics, which increases the cost of manufacturing such a motor. Before we do a little comparative testing, let's return to the speed control. If the firing rate on the motor will be too high for us, then by turning the regulator we can smoothly reduce it up to 50%. It's worth remembering because in the case of operation with a MOSFET, the regulation from MOSFET circuit level may not work properly. I will now perform three simple tests in which we'll compare the performance of the replica with a regular and brushless motor, so that you can see for yourself what difference you can expect from the change and whether a such a difference in your opinion is worth the investment in a brushless motor. And here is an important note. The replicas I will use for the test I assembled myself, and because I am not a professional airsoft technician but an occasional fixer, they may not be optimized and their performance or power consumption may be higher than in replicas assembled by someone with more expertise. Nevertheless, this test is only to show what difference we can expect if we decide to invest in a brushless motor, so I will base my conclusions on what I see and hear and the results of measurements taken by the replicas mounted MOSFETs. So spare me the comments that the replicas are put together badly and the methodology is not a laboratory. With that behind, let us move to the testing. Each test will be performed on a Turnigi Nanotech 11.1 1200mAh battery. 
which I charged between tests. I used such a battery, because I would use it in each of these replicas during a real game, and for the first test I will use completely stock CM515 replica with a regular weak motor. Stock. BL480. You can clearly hear the difference, both on semi and full auto, but personally I will not recommend investing in a brushless motor for a stock replica. Another replica in which we will test the motor is the SAB12 with 18 to 1 gears and a Jeftron Leviathan optical MOSFET installed, with which we will measure the difference between the heavily used super high power motor from JG, that is their kind of high torque, and the brushless BL480. Of course, I switched the MOSFET to the brushless motor mode before the test. JG BL480 As for the statistics, at the end of the test it looked as follows. In the case of the JG motor, consumption on the start was over 74 amps, average consumption on semi was over 29 amps and on full auto over 11 amps. The rate of fire was almost 18 bbs per second. In the case of the BL480, the starting load was over 46 amps, the average load on semi was over 28 amps and on full auto over 14 amps while the rate of fire was over 24 bbs per second. Thus, in addition to the audible difference in the response on semi and rate of fire on auto, which increased by 6 rounds per second, we also see difference in current consumption, and most totally on its startup, where the difference between the JG and the BL480 was about 28 amps, which is quite a lot, but the JG motor, as I mentioned it, was heavily used, and even as new one was not a great either. The last replica we'll test is the SAE-10 with the DSG running with a gears in ratio of 18 to 1 on a point ultra torque motor. The whole thing is controlled by gate titan chip, which of course I switched to brushless motor mode. Point motor. BL480 In turn, the statistics at the end of the test were as follows. In the case of the point motor, the current consumption on semi was over 45 amps, while on auto it was over 19 amps. The rate of fire we achieved was 33 bbs per second. In case of the BL480 motor, current consumption on semi was over 26 amps, while in full auto mode it was over 25 amps, and the rate of fire was 38 bbs per second. The difference in sound on semi due to the use of DSG was not as great as with the previous replicas, but on the auto the difference could be heard clearly, and I gained 5 bbs per second. More important, however, is the difference in consumption on semi between point and BL480. was about 19 amps. For some reason the consumption on the auto increased by 6 amps, but I don't know why. Ok, let's summarize what the results tell us. Using the same battery in each case there is a noticeable improvement in trigger response in semi mode, as well as clear increase in the rate of fire on full auto, which for many may already be an incentive to switch the brushless motor. But very important is the fact that these improved results are also followed by lower power consumption, which directly means that on the same battery we can simply fire more shots on a single charge than with a standard motor, which can be very important if you're using a replica with several limited battery space to accommodate a smaller pack. 
So would I recommend everyone to switch to a brushless motor? Well, not really, and there's an important reason for that, and that's the price of the motor. At the time of writing the review, on the manufacturer's website it costs $109.88, which puts the price well above many of the top standard motors, which I think will suffice for the vast majority of the players. So who would I recommend investing in such a motor? BL480 or any other brushless motor will work best in a really well-built high-performance replicas, where every millisecond of the cycle is important and which will be able to fully exploit the potential of the motor, and in the case when you really care about saving energy. Because as we've seen, especially with the semi-mode, the difference even in case of my replicas was significant. That will be all for today. Let me know how you liked today's video and what do you think about brushless motors, and if you use one, how does it work for you? And for now, thanks for watching and see you next time!